And then when you've done that, the word of God is very clear. Proverbs 16, verse 3, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So it doesn't say commit your dreams to the Lord and then your plans, you know, will succeed. Commit your work. And I think some say is the Lord establishes the works of our hands. So we commit that which we are going to do to the Lord. And then we acknowledge as we meditate on that, this has been committed to the Lord, therefore definitely it's going to work. So we need to be, God is very practical. He's a God of practice. Uh, you know, he just doesn't speak hairy, fairy things. Yes, he's a God of miracles, but those miracles are also sometimes activated through the works of the hands of the things that we do. Uh, he creates and makes things uh, that are not to be. So we need to just follow in his footsteps and be able to do that. Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will succeed. So what you've planned, commit it to God and say, Lord, these are my plans. I am going to ask you to then make a way where there seems to be no way concerning my plan. I know you're going to work out all things for my good because you've already gone ahead of me and you are with me always. Amen. And as we do that, we begin to walk slowly in the processes of God that he wants for us. The Japanese coined a word called Kaizen. Most of you may have heard this. And again, it has to do with continuous self-development. Uh, they also loosely translate it as good change. Do you see how they work? <laughs> I think they've just taken the principles from the Bible because God wants us to be thinking good always. And from thinking good comes good change. So when you begin to think good, you become good to other people. So change that is good comes from a certain practice of certain principles in life. And the, 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 the Japanese say it's called hansei, to live for others. Now, what has God called us to do? <laughs> to live for other people. God has called us to be change makers, to be influencers, to impact other people. Everything that we do, Mr. Masiwa says, if you want to prosper in business, look where the need is the greatest and then provide a solution for that. These principles are just so uh, you know, aligned in the way that they're, they're spoken about and they're practiced. So you look at yourself, you look at where do I need to change? We talked about that self-criticism where you say, okay, this is the past year that's gone by. I'm going to next year. What is it that I need to change? And then uh, friends, you need the courage. You need the courage to execute that which you have planned and that which you have decided on. Some change is painful. Do you know that it's easy to stay at a point of uh, depression because it just looks easy. Let me just stay sad uh, because you you just can't shake it off and just can't uh, assume the boldness to take a step forward. You associate, you know, uh, your identity, who you are, and everything around a certain point of disappointment or failure or loss, and it's. It's not intentional. It's just the human nature uh, that does that to us. And so Kaizen here is presenting us and saying, in order for you to move forward or in order to activate good change, you need courage. You need boldness. It's just like students who are in school. Right now, you know that guy. It's If you just go to school and do the bare minimum, guess what? You'll pass with a C. <laughs> but when you put your heart and your foot into it, you get a B. Blood, sweat, <laughs> and uh, sacrifice will get you that A. Sleepless nights, hard work, consistency, seeking help will get you the A star. So you see, the process of life is, you know, yeah, if you dig deep, you plug in there, you will get the results that you want. But it takes courage. It takes courage to change. It takes courage to move. It takes courage to get up in the morning when you are heavy laden with depression. It takes courage. And then when you do that, next stage you need to do is break the status quo. Have you ever heard the point that everyone is doing it or everyone is doing it? 
And guess what? If you follow that status quo, you will not be a trailblazer. You will not be a star leader. You will not be a young and dynamic person. If you follow status quo, you will remain average. And average people are just statistics. But in order for you to activate good change, you've got to break status quo. So sometimes it actually needs, means getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, if you're at university and your friends don't seem to be inspiring you to do great things, maybe it's time to move out and look for new accommodation. Just a change of environment may actually see you do greater things. Or maybe even just slightly change your uh, proximity to certain people. Uh, and, and you, or change language. Uh, you know, you, you, you stand around people who are always complaining about something you begin to change language. You set your mind to never complain about anything. <laughs> never. That's breaking status quo because status quo is always complaining, is always criticizing, is always looking down, is always speaking down, is always negative. It's always hard, bold, and, and, and uh, you know, mundane and weighing us down. And then when you've done that, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 begins to become a reality. No, I sin. No ear has heard, no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. But this requires courage, breaking the status quo, and continuously you know, criticizing yourself. And, uh, and this has more to do with introspection rather than looking down on yourself. You're introspecting and say, I could have run uh, the 21 kilometers in two hours but I did three hours. So I need to work on reducing that hour because I can do it. I can do it. That, that's self-criticism. Say, okay, what do I need to do? Maybe I need to lose a little bit more weight. Maybe I need to buy better running shoes. Maybe I need to uh, frequent my exercise, rest appropriately before I rest. That way I can begin to uh, meditate on no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor has it come to the mind of men, uh, the things that God has prepared for those who love him.